We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills need quality of their relationships. This, this is, is the Couples, Couples Academy, Academy Show. Show. Welcome, 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 everyone, to the Couples Academy show. My name is Sonny. And I'm Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. And we're here to serve you today. Um, we're glad that you're here, whether you're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you may be. We welcome you to the show. Let us know what city, state and country you're representing so that we can acknowledge you. This is the place where people hang out every single morning to talk about love, life and relationships. Glad to have Jeff on today. We're talking about husbands who continue to disappoint. What a perfect topic for us to delve into. As you know, Jeff Witt is our men's coach. He's been working with men all over the world and what he's discovered is there are certain commonalities even though we have different languages different cultures different backgrounds different upbringings there are these strings there are these fabrics that are interwoven into maleness and that's why we have to break it up in help convert them into men, manhood. So that's what we're talking about today. Now, listen, before we get into the topic, if you're wondering why is this brother wearing shades, I was up till five o'clock in the morning. So <clears throat> I'm wearing cool. these. He wants to be cool. That's what it really well, is. <laughs> well, when, you, when you're cool, the sun shines on you all the time, day or night. Wow. But no, I had a long night and uh, we had a powerful couple come from Idaho. We did an amazing intensive and we were putting in that work and putting in those hours. Uh, and so, yeah, th th this morning, five o'clock this morning, we ended everything. That's how serious we are about this work. So if you're ready to get it, if you listen, if you want to tiptoe tap dance and pussyfoot around your issues, then go to a traditional therapist. But if you want this real work, you need to come up in here and do one of these privates uh, with Couples Academy because we can help turn your situation inside out. Listen, guys, before we get started with this topic, as you know, next weekend is the last chance weekend, May 13th through the 15th. That's when we have couples who will drive and fly in from all over the country to get transformation in their relationship. We encourage you to register. There's still room. Also, download the Couples Academy app. You can watch the show through the Couples Academy app. Amongst a number of other things that we have, we have events posted, we have our services offered, you can connect with our practitioners. Uh, there's a lot of great resources that are available there. So if you haven't done it, go ahead and do that. And Foundry, we had our Foundry meeting last night. Oh man, what a powerful, powerful session it was, Jeff. Jeff leads that and uh, had men signing up all the way up to like right before um, our session because they realized that there were some things that they needed in their lives and unearth starts next wednesday so make sure you come and get it all right guys we're going to delve into this conversation uh husbands who continue to disappoint jeff the reason why i wanted to have this conversation this morning and let me just say before we get started we are not talking about all husbands all husbands do not disappoint. So I don't want to give that impression. I don't want men listening who are handling their business, who are showing up the right way to think that we're talking about you. You know, Joker, who we're talking about. I'm talking about the one that continues to fail, that continues not to show up, that continues not to do the work, that is frustrating and disappointing and, and wavers back and forth and has no focus, no direction, no clarity. We're going to talk about this today because women are reaching out, crying and complaining, not knowing what else to do. They feel hopeless. They feel helpless. They're, they're, they're in a place of desperation where they just want to throw in the towel, call it quits, give up. Maybe I should call an attorney maybe I should just seek the divorce because he just won't act right. He just won't do right. So we need to have this conversation to get to the root of the matter. So wives, if you're watching this, make sure you have your husband sit down and watch this during the replay. Husbands, if you're watching this and you're not doing right, we're talking to you and have a conversation with your spouse about how you're showing up. So let's dive deep. Now, when I told you about this topic, Jeff, automatically you resonated with it because you just said, just last night, you were talking about this topic. So come on and give us the wisdom that you give the men through Foundry. Well, when we talk about disappointment, we really need to understand what these words mean. A lot of us have learned our vocabulary through 
um, through context. In other words, we hear a word and someone gives us the context of what it means, but we never actually take and look and break things down by suffix, prefix, and word, root word. So when we dis, disrespect, disappoint, display, right, we are moving things away from. When we look at what a point is, a point is a place on a map. And when whenever we use the subject meant, like government, to rule over the minds, parliament, to speak the mind, meant always means mind. It comes from mentes, which I believe is either Latin or Greek. I forget which. But when we, dis disappointments are basically where we've placed an expectation in our mind on something, and we find that that, that expectation has not come into reality. Okay, so sometimes these disappointments are falsely placed by us. So we're looking at our spouse and we're saying we want to create this fantasy world of what they are, but they've never shown up that way and they've never even told us that they were that way. And we place our appointment or we put an, a, a point on the place where our minds go, where we believe that they should be. We created that expectation for them, not with them. And so in that particular case, that disappointment is of your own creation. But sometimes men disappoint because they, and this is many times, we say we're going to do one thing. We may even have the intention of being that, showing up that way and doing it that way. But the truth of the matter is we are creating false expectations of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that happens because of insecurity. And we're taught to do this because of the way that we're raised in this particular cultural norm. We tend to have these ideas of always saying we're going to do something and never quite reaching the goal. And it becomes OK. We get participation trophies and we mm -hmm. go around asking our wives to give us participation. But, uh, but uh, I'm working hard. And we, we create these ideas but we're not living up to what we say. And that's because we're raised in a world of liars. And so we mm. have to work on that. Mm. And, and, you know, you talk with men, but you also have opportunities where you're hearing from these wives. You know, when these wives are coming to you, what are their typical complaints about their husbands that we need to unpack in this show? So there's a variety of things, but a lot of them is just the fact that men don't even really understand what it means to be a man. And the women actually understand better what it means to be a man. They have a concept, an idea in their heads of what it means to be a man. Where does this concept come from and where are men not showing up? I want you to think about it, ladies, for a second. And men, if you want, I want you to really focus on this. Every single woman I know on the planet, regardless of culture, right? There is a princess story you were raised with on what it meant to be a princess. Someone called you their little princess, whether it was Barbie or Cinderella or Snow White or Moana, you had some cultural icon of what it meant to be treated like a lady and what it meant to, to, to reach that pinnacle of being something. And so women have been striving for this. But men, men were never taught how to be princes. They were not taught how to be a prince. They were taught to be hunters and farmers and fishermen and soldiers. And uh, they, I want to be a superhero. They have all these concepts. Now, traditionally, in the old days, you would see what it would like to be a man from your father interacting with you. But now we got a bunch of Al Bundy fathers who sit back as soon as they get home and watch Sports Center like this. So we've had 30 years of not a single man out there with an instruction manual on how to be a man, mm. how to show up. And I'm not talking about toxic masculinity. Masculinity is not toxic. That's being a little boy. What I'm talking about is showing up, handling your responsibility, keeping your word, living in truth, being accountable, being able to accept criticism without feeling like they have to take it personally. They take a look at themselves and go, you know what? Up to these standards, I don't measure. And so I'm going to work on that and creating realistic things that they commit to and that they take the steps on a daily basis to honor their word and everything that they do. This is what I'm talking about being a man. I don't think that doesn't apply to being a woman either. I'm just saying there's a societal expectation of what a man should do when they create a child or when they say I, I do 
or when they say they commit to a work schedule or when they can make a commitment to the family that we're going to go on this vacation or do these things and then we don't show up. Mm -hmm. So we've got to re-change that. And there's some real deep psychological stuff that's coming in from all angles and all these different groups that we're not working on. And when we learn how to filter through the information we allow ourselves to accept mm -hmm. and we learn to take some more time and stop doing you know, dumb stuff like putting sports jerseys on our back with another man's name on your back. I'm not going to say what I call that. No, um, say what you call it. I call it a tramp stamp. Put a tramp stamp with another man's name on your back. Sit there. You know more about his statistics than you know about our, your bank account. You know more about his money and how much money he's doing and what he did with her, his wife than you're doing for yours. That's a problem. Jeff, uh, on the other side of this break, I want to come back and I want to talk about one of the things that women do complain about regarding their husbands, and those are the vices, the vices that husbands struggle with and how we can help transition those vices into virtues. Guys, stay right there. We're having a deep conversation. Be right back after this short break. Welcome to the Couples Academy app. The Couples Academy app is your go-to hub for how to do marriage right. Get started with our app today by perusing our amazing features that conveniently allow you to connect. This app is packed with powerful content and resources to help you grow and stay connected. With this app, you can watch our messages, find marriage resources, Watch, listen, and read the real-life stories of restored couples. Sign up for events, read articles and blog posts, stay up to date with push notifications, share your favorite messages via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or email, and download messages for offline listening. For more information about the Couples Academy app, go to couplesacademy.org. All right, guys, we're back. You're watching the Couples Academy show, and we're having a comprehensive conversation with our our, our co-host here, Jeff Witt, who is our men's empowerment coach. Um, we're talking about husbands who continue to disappoint. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are some husbands who disappoint their wives. Uh, they disappoint their children. Uh, they disappoint themselves at the end of the day. And so we want to talk about why that is. And one of the one of the biggest struggles that men, some men come into, you know, a last chance weekend with our vices. When we get alone in our own private quarters and we have our breakout sessions, a lot of these vices are revealed. And I want to I want you to identify what these are and how we can begin to overcome them and to turn them into virtues so that we're no longer disappointing, but stepping up and stepping forward and taking on responsibility the, the, the way that we were designed to in our homes. So a lot of us have started with vices from, from, from childhood. 
things that we did to seek comfort and feel in control or sometimes to escape a situation. So we have to look at what these vices are individually and, and how they became. So, so some of us had blankies when we were a little child and if mommy took that blankie or if I didn't have my teddy bear, I couldn't go to sleep. And so we created these comfort things that we become attached to that are completely unnecessary for life. And we use them as a way to feel like we're in control or feel like we are safe. Now, or to run away, to try to quiet the thoughts and quiet the mind. Well, where do these vices come from? They come from our five sense organs. The, the, these five sense organs are pieces of equipment that we have in order to survive, to be able to be responsible or be able to have the ability to respond in the world. So when we look at responsibility, that word is the ability to respond. What happens is when the equipment that we own begins to control us, we are out of control. The quintessential version of us, the best version of us is out of control. So we get distracted by what we see. Well, let's look at what those types of seeing things can be. It could be porn. It could be talking to a new woman. It could be chasing. It could be shopping. It could be anything where what we see, we want for some reason. We have to look at what insecurity is being filled by that desire that's created by the odds. What we hear. Sometimes we want to hear people say certain things to us, even if they're not true. Tell us we're, we're great human beings. Tell us we're skinny when we're not. Tell us we need to hear those things because we want to dodge a reality. So we look for people who placate us and that can lead us to temptation when we're in a struggle at home. Instead of dealing with the confrontation that's happening in the home, we will listen to someone else who's telling us, oh, you don't need to do that. That makes us feel good. And so now our equipment, which is connected to our mind, which is also a piece of equipment that's being ill used, is now driving this soul or the spirit of the person who's actually in control. That person has gone to sleep and they've allowed themselves to be run by the five senses. That taste, right? I, oh man, that tastes so good. And then you think about it and you dwell on it and you end up chasing and doing whatever your mouth wants to feel, what, whatever it wants to experience, smells, perfumes, different things. And these all influence our mind uh, through our thoughts. Our thoughts then start to affect our emotions right? And so alcohol is a way to depress or to get away from or to run from a situation, right? Sex with other people outside the marriage is a fantasy that we create in order to get away from the old situation and create a new excitement. We're looking for oxytocin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. These are the drugs that our mind creates that we're actually chasing when we do these vices, we're chasing certain hormones to get away from one, cortisol, right? And then when we can't really deal with the situation and we're dodging, that's GABA. That's trying to numb ourselves to a situation. So when we understand how this neurochemistry works, we can learn to actually use the equipment in our lab to create the life of our dreams without causing damage to people around. This is what we work on in Valley. Mm. So we're, we're, we're enslaving ourselves to vices that are outside of ourselves because we haven't properly mastered uh, the, the components within us. Yes. If you look at it, think about it. You get in the car and you know how to drive it. But how many people in here know how to take that thing apart and put it back together and make it work even better? We know, we know how to use our minds the same way we know how to use a car. We know how to use our senses in a general sense to get through. But when it's not working, when it's not creating the results or going the place that you want, like a car skids off the road, it's out of control. And when we skid once in a while, it's okay because no one's around and, and like we feel like that's okay. But then when we're living a life where we're skidding through and causing damage to everyone around us, you're hurting yourselves, you're hurting your vehicle your body, your mind, and your senses, you're hurting all of those around you. And no one gave you the instruction manual on how to actually operate this vehicle, one, and two, how to make it perform even better to accomplish your goals. And so we've taken the time to study history and religion and science and neuroscience 
and psychology and all these kinds of things to try to recreate an instruction manual that at least gives men and in, in some cases women and on earth a guidance system that allows them to know what to do when certain problems arrive and it's a it's 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 a bulletproof system that accomplishes 90 95% of the problems in your life can disappear if you're willing to do the work wow this this is deep this is some comprehensive stuff uh, if I shrink all this down uh, into what so many men come to us saying, listen, you know, I'm in this marriage trying to figure this thing out. But, you know, truth be told, I, I don't even know what it means to be a man. Like, I don't even know what it is. See, those secret conversations, those they private don't conversations. They have those out in public, but they have them in private. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. Because, you know, in the midst of our of our wives, we we show bravado. Right. We put on airs, false faces, these disguises. We have to show up a certain type of way. You know, we have to show Superman with a big S on our chest. But there's a Clark Kent struggling on the inside. And uh, oftentimes we hear, I just don't know what it means to even be a man. Either I had no example or I had a bad example. And I'm still trying to figure this out. How could I be good for her and good for them if I don't even know what it means to be good for myself? And so this is why I love what you're talking about, because you're getting down to the fundamental reasons as to why we are dealing with this internal struggle that we haven't figured it out. And, and the thing about men, oftentimes we don't allow ourselves to submit ourselves to someone else's wisdom, because that's what women do. We make submission gender specific. But it makes me think if you're an athlete, you submit to a coach. If you're a soldier, you submit to your commanding officer. If you're a student, you submit to the teacher, right? So those are non-gender specific functionings that we all can have or all have participated in. Likewise, as men, sometimes it just makes sense to say, I surrender. You know, I submit to someone else who represents my rule one someone who has what I want, has been where I am, that can guide me through a process to become the man that I was designed to be, but just hasn't figured it out. That's why we're so glad that we have you on this team. I want to go to one of the comments, Jeff. Uh, I thought this was quite interesting. Jaguar says, I wish I could ship my husband to you guys to get reprogrammed, but he doesn't want to try foundry. He's in therapy and he's trying, but his thought process and coping mechanisms are so dysfunctional. Well, I'll tell you this. At least he's in therapy, first of all. And tell him I want to have a conversation with him. We'll do 15 minutes and just sit down and see. Because a lot of them are, I'm going to be honest, they're just scared. And they're not scared of me. They're scared of actually having to look at themselves in the mirror and see what's actually there. See, I notice men aren't men real quick. One little old fashioned trick. Men have a hard time looking another man in the eye. And so when I'm standing face to face with a man talking to him, I can see all of his pain, all of his insecurity, all of the things he's hiding. I don't know all the details, but I know where that is. I know what chemicals are reacting and I know what it takes to reconstitute better actions just by looking them in the eye. And if I look in the eye and I don't break contact with their eyes and they can hold over two or three minutes, that's a sure man. But most men look away. I challenge you, ladies, you want to find out if your man needs help on the insecurity side? He may be playing bravado. Just sit there and look him deep in his eyes and see if he can stay there and keep eye contact. Mm. And what you'll know is Pete, the submissive person, the person who's actually really hiding it's just like the Garden of Eden when Adam came, when, when he became awake and realized he was naked before God. He said, but I hid and I had to put on the fig leaves and we went and hid behind these bushes because we didn't want you to see us this way. And so when we become aware that we're insecure and there's men out there telling you, hey, listen, I can help with that. There's a fear that we want to go and hide in the bushes. And so we have to step up. And so I said, just let, let him talk to me. Tell him, I'm, you know, talk to him 15 minutes. It won't take much time. And we'll see, because I've had a few of those. And some of those guys that hide are my best and favorite students because they mm -hmm. end up showing up in ways when they feel the freedom of not hiding anymore, of being able to step out. 
they shine. I had one guy in one of the last chance weekends, his wife was like, I really want my husband to, to do this foundry thing, but he won't do it. He doesn't need, he says he doesn't need another man. I said, let me talk to him. For, if you can just get him to come talk to me, I'm not going to go hunt him down. So he came over and he talked to me 15 minutes later. This guy's like, I don't read. I don't do all that stuff. Get him in the class. That dude has done 14 books in eight weeks. That is non-reader. Non-reader. And That's now he's fact. in love with this whole process. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it's about finding the source of a person's motivation. And, you know, here's a comment I want to go to because this is this is something that I, I, I see often. Um, a. Lawson says, it is so discouraging dealing with the same behaviors, different scenarios. How do I deal with someone who, who, who continues to use his past to justify his destructive, manipulative, and hurtful behavior? And this is a good point because, you know, a lot of times men in particular will say uh, they will identify their self-image with their past hurts, past pains. The, the, you know, I grew up on the wrong side of the tracks. You know, I didn't had it hard. I didn't have this. I, I, was, I was void of that. And that has shaped their identity, even in their adulthood. And if that's who they perceive themselves to be, then there's a story that they're telling themselves every single day. And that story has become cemented in their psyche and they show up a certain way based upon the narrative, the story, and the way they identify themselves. So it's almost like they almost show up to life already defeated already uh, expecting to fail and to disappoint. How do we begin to break the psyche uh, and disassociate one's past from one's present? It makes me think of the song. Um, many hip hop artists reference this statement. They say, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. But so many people identify where they come from and they make where they come from or what they've come from who they are. Well, when you take a look at this, I want to look directly at a question and answer that question. How do I deal with someone who continues the same cycles of behavior, right? So when we look at that, how do you deal? Guess what? I guarantee you, if you really, really, really search deep, you're enabling somewhere. You're giving him permission to return because you're breaking. If you look at how we raise our children, there are lines we set and these boundaries, and we don't necessarily want to cause physical harm or fight with them or argue with them, but you're not doing that. No, you're not staying out till midnight, young lady. You're 15 years old. I'm drawing that line. We do it with our children when we love them and care about them, and we're not doing it in an abusive way. I want to make sure we're clear because I know there's people out there. Just the statistics alone tell me one of you is abusing your children. One of you is abusing your husband. One of your husbands is abusing you. Just the numbers, just looking at the numbers. I know that there are people out there who are going through those things. But if you're not in a physically abusive situation, I guarantee you there's something you're doing to enable them. And it's because you have your own issues that you're dealing with that is just allowing you to feel frustrated and tired and broken. I want you to know your husband will never make you happy. Men, your wives will never make you happy. Happiness is an internal struggle. You're not going to find it outside of you. You have to create that. And then what we have to do is support our spouses and helping them complement our happiness. And we have to be the same thing for them. And to do that, we have to get down to the root, the underlying issues that is the damage caused from childhood teenagers and 20 years old that never got dealt with, that got pushed under the rug. We have to deal with that and reconstitute what we know. Because when we have a plan, when we have certainty, if I can see the pot of gold at the end of the street, there's no one coming, no one to block it, no defense mechanisms, and I'm told I'm allowed to go and get it, nine out of 10 people will actually take the steps to go and get what they deserve if they're certain. But the only way we can be certain is to clean out the junk and get a real plan that we truly, truly believe in. Jeff, we got to do a part two. We, we, we just, you know, we can't, we have to stop because it's 10 o'clock, but we need to do a part two. Listen, guys, if you're watching and you want more of this, I want you to put in the chat right now, more. That's all I want to hear. More. That's all I want to see. If you want more of this, because we have just scratched the surface. There's such a deeper dive. I see the comments here. Trust me, I'm going to take these comments, bring them into the next show where we bring him on if you want it. But I'm only bringing them back 
if you want it. Let us know. Guys, you're watching the Couples Academy show. Jeff, I appreciate you for doing what you do with Foundry. I appreciate who you are, what you've done in my life, and what you can do, continue to do in the lives of others. Guys, see you tomorrow for Relationship Q&A. Take care.